I took on the challenge with my friends from Game Dev TV and we had 90 minutes to create the ultimate castle game level environment. I was using Blender and was competing against Unity and Unreal. There were no asset packs allowed and we had to go low poly with flat shading. You can see the full epic battle by clicking the link in the description. In this video, I'll share my entire process for creating my castle from scratch. I'll show you the techniques and shortcuts I use to make this masterpiece you can see on the screen. And for those of you that want to take your skills to the next level, I've got a special offer, three course beginner bundle, and it's now only $30. Check the description for the discount code. Also a massive shout out to Nvidia and PC specialists for sponsoring this video and making the creation process fast and easy. So sit back and enjoy me on my journey to create the ultimate castle and beat those nasty Unity and Unreal competitors. So for the base, I started with a plane and then mapped out exactly what I wanted it to look like. So I wanted a kind of level design where you run up a pathway into the castle area where there's a final boss. I left a gap in for a bridge as well. I thought that would look quite nice. And this big circle area for the castle structure. Once that's in place, then I can decide on the heights I want. So I extrude it out and then I use the proportional edit tool to just grab a few faces and then I can adjust the height accordingly. I then select the bottom faces and just scale them outwards so there's a slope. So it's all fairly straightforward so far and then we start building the rocks around this. Here's a super quick way to make low poly rocks. First of all, delete the default cube. So I'll select it, press delete. And I'm going to add in mesh and an icosphere. Now with the dialog box down the bottom here, let's open that up and change it to one subdivision. See what happens to my icosphere in the middle? It reduces the poly count. Now let's zoom in. I'll scale it in the Z so it's going to be a long rock like this. You can make whatever shape you want. Into edit mode with tab, or that's edit mode up here. And there's two commands you need to learn. The first is to bevel vertices. So I'll select a vertex and normally to bevel, you hold down control and press B. And if I move my mouse side to side, it's not working. But if I press V now, I get my bevel. So I'll left click and set that in place. And you can see in the bevel commands, it's affecting the vertices and not the edges. I'll do that once more because there's a quick way to do it. If I select this one down here, I can press control shift B and that will do the same thing. So I've got two bevels there. The next important command is the edge slide. So I can select one of these vertices and press GG to edge slide it to another one. However, in order to merge these together, if I press GG again, you can see it's not actually merged. To merge them together, we need to press this button up here, which is auto merge vertices. Now when I press GG to edge slide, they're both together. So I can start edge sliding these across into different places and we're getting an interesting looking rock. You'll certainly want to bevel the top and bottom. So control B to bevel those, slide that one down there, slide that one as well. This one as well, control shift B, one around this side, control shift B. Okay, now we've got what looks to be a bit of a rubbish rock at the moment, and we've got these problem faces here. So it certainly needs a bit of tidying up and a little bit more artistic flair. We don't really want any dents like this, so I can just select this one and GG to slide it down, but then that's far too far and we've got all these problems. So you need to think about which one you're sliding to. So this one over here would make sense, but then we've got this dent here. I'll undo that. So what we may need to do is select from here and shift select this one and press J to join. And that will fill it in and we won't have any problems. We've got a similar problem with this one here. So I could go from here to here maybe and J to join. And you can see we're slowly building up an interesting shape. And if you've got an area like this and you think that's not quite working, just slide it into another one and it squares it off and does a nice job. And already if I zoom out, we're getting a fairly interesting low poly rock. I want to go in and just bevel a few more of these. So control shift B to bevel, edge slide, maybe edge slide this one across, maybe edge slide this one across and this one to here. And we've got an interesting cut there. I'll slide this one across as well. Bring that one down a bit so it's a little bit rounder. This one across a little bit and this one across and we're creating a fun rock. The last command that you might like is the beveling edges. So if I go to edge mode now with two or that's edge mode up here, I can select an edge and control B to bevel the whole edge. If I go back to object mode, you can see that edge doesn't quite work. But if I go back into edit mode and select all the vertices at one end and press M to merge and then merge at center, back into object mode, we've got quite an interesting line across our low poly rock there, which can work quite well. So just a little bit more editing. I'll just slide these about to round the shape off. 
put some of these together like this. This area is a bit flat, so I might go from here down to here and J to join. Then I can bring this out slightly. Bring that across, vertex slide here, bevel this edge here, take the top vertices, merge them together at center. And these two I'll slide together like this. And we've got an interesting looking low poly rock. Now, if you're creating some kind of landscape, you can duplicate this with Shift D and move it across on the X axis. I can then rotate by the Z 90 degrees, let's say, and it actually looks like a different rock. I can then Shift D, move it across, RZ 90 once again, and again, looks like a different rock. I can scale this by the X axis to make it a longer rock. Maybe scale this one by the Z axis to make it a bit taller. You can also go in and start editing the shape if you want to give it some bigger variation. And that's how we create low poly rocks. And you can see me here just finishing off the rocks in my scene. Then I start placing them around my island. I'm doing this in a really basic method, just copying and pasting and putting them all around the outside. I should really put these into a collection, but I was trying to move really fast so I didn't worry too much. I thought I might have a really big rock and the bigger you go when you're scaling up, the more detail you lose. So I decided to make a new rock that was based on two subdivisions this time. So I can make that one a bit bigger and it will have the same kind of detail as the smaller rocks with only one subdivision for the icosphere. So you can kind of make out the landscape now and how it's forming. The castle's very straightforward. I just take the default cube in this case. And because it's symmetrical in the Y and the X, I mirrored it twice. I use the auto mirror tool for that. So if I press N on my keyboard, I've got it in my edit options under auto mirror. You do need to enable this add-on. So edit, preferences, add-ons, type in auto, and make sure auto mirror is ticked. Now I can press the auto mirror button. And if I go into edit mode, you can see it's cut it in half for me and it's created the mirror. If I go to my modifiers, there's my mirror. I'll also do it in the Y. So I'll click on the Y, but I change this to negative and then auto mirror there. And I just have to work on this one corner here. And I've got two mirror modifiers here with clipping enabled. Now I can come in, select this top face, I to inset, B to turn off the boundary so it insets into the middle like this. G to grab in the Z, E to extrude, E to extrude again and scale. So E then S, bring that out. G to grab in the Z. And I'm just creating a sort of castle structure. E to extrude in the Z and I've got some really basic tower. And you can modify the shapes and all sorts. Next, I did two loop cuts. So Control R, use the wheel of my mouse to create two, and set those in place there. And this side, Control R, wheel of my mouse to create two, and set them in place there. The only problem with this is if I select these three, let's say, and need to extrude, I've got a really thick one in the middle and thinner ones on the outside. So I did actually reposition my loop cuts slightly in order to make them work. So I'll undo that, select the edge from here, across to here by holding down control, GG to edge slide to move those across. These ones as well from here to here, GG to edge slide. So I've got a thicker one here and a thinner one here, which is gonna be roughly the same size as this when they're extruded. I need to do the same this side as well though. So again, from here to here, GG to edge slide, make that one thinner. And from here to here, GG to edge slide to make that thicker as well. So around about there, I'm sure I could have been a bit more precise. Then to face mode, Select the outside faces first and E to extrude to pull them upwards once. And then these ones from here, here and here, E to extrude and pull it upwards. And we've got a really basic castle. Obviously I was a tiny bit more precise than I was just then, but generally speaking from a distance, it works fairly well. One very slight issue you might come across if I zoom in and go to edit mode once again. If I press Alt Z and I want to, let's say, select all these and scale them upwards. So scale Shift Z to move them outwards, can you see it's actually sort of scaling a little bit strangely. That's because if I go to my transform pivot point, we're currently on the median point. So if I go to top view, it's taking the middle point of all these faces here, which is around about here. So if I scale in and out, you can see it going towards the middle here, and it's not taking into account my mirrors. So I need to move my 3D cursor into the middle. It's already there at the moment, but you can just shift right click to move it wherever you need to. So into the middle there is fine. And go up to the transform pivot point. The period key on your keyboard is the shortcut for that and change it to 3D cursor. Now if I scale Shift Z, I can move it outwards from the 3D cursor and change the size of the top if I wanted to. So if you want to make any adjustments, you just have to be aware of that. I'll undo that though, because it looks a bit strange and I'd probably want to get rid of this bottom row here and then scale Shift Z to move those out if we wanted a bigger top and smaller base. So that's how I made the castle structure. 
but slightly better than this one. And you can see me here back in my scene. And once I've got that castle structure in or design, should I say, I can then repeat it and create the full castle structure by just modifying that shape very slightly and adding variation for interest. I also create a kind of side turret thing that kind of sticks out from the main turret. It makes it more sort of visually interesting or architecturally interesting. And you can start to see the basic layout and design now. Now the spin tool is really helpful for creating arches. If I select my default cube and go into edit mode, go to face mode with three and choose the top face. Now I want to create an archway by curving this up this way. So we want the Y axis to be the axis that we curve around. So let's go across to our spin tool just here. You can see the axes up here and it defaults to the Z. So if I go to top view with seven, you can see it will go around the Z axis. So this way around, if I change it to the Y and go to front view with one, we can see now it's going around the Y axis, which is what we want. However, if I start this off now and click and drag, you can see that it's going around the 3D cursor. So it's not working for us. So I'll undo that. So I'll have to move my 3D cursor to a position I want this curve to go around. So perhaps somewhere around here. So shift right click to move my 3D cursor to there. And now hopefully this will arch around the 3D cursor as if it's in the center of the circle. So I can click either of these plus points and drag. And if I hold down control, I can snap and I can create my arch like that. Now we've got a amount of steps just here, but if I change that, it doesn't do anything. I'll just put that back to 12. If I want to change the number that I've just created, I come to my dialog box just here and I can bring down the steps within here. So this is the dialog box for tools that you've just used and therefore we have to use this one to change the steps. If I want to curve this again for some reason, it will have the same number that's up here. So you've got this number up here to say how many you want and this number in here that you can change to edit that. But I'll undo that and we can see the beginning of our arch there. I just need to delete this face and then create a mirror around this point. So for example, if I go to vertex mode, select these vertices and shift S to move my cursor to selected. My 3D cursor is now in the middle there. I can then go back to object mode, right click, set origin to 3D cursor. My origin is in the right place for the mirror now. I can then come across to my mirror tool, add modifier mirror, and there we've got our arch. I could of course just completed my spin all the way around and then extruded downwards as well, but it's a little bit faster with the mirror if I want to make any adjustments. And that's how we use the spin tool to create arches and similar things. So you can see me completing the arch just here by adding a few more intricate details. And that's why the mirror really helps and makes the editing a lot quicker. The castle walls are fairly similar to how I created the castle structure. I do a few loop cuts and then extrude out for the crenellations. I then start positioning and placing these around. I'm not worried too much at the moment about them being really precise, but I do leave a downward crenellation at one end and an upward crenellation at the other of the wall. That way they slot together nice and easily and I can use an array modifier if I so choose. For the trees, I do have another video about how to make these, so I'll link that in the description. But it's a very simple case of getting a low poly cylinder and tapering it in at one end. I then repeat that, twist it around a bit, distort it slightly to create a very simple pine tree. Now placing the trees, I do just duplicate them and position them, but a particle system would be a little bit quicker perhaps, but I haven't created that many trees, so it's probably about the same in terms of timing. Part of the fun of the challenge was having things kind of thrown at you and we got told we needed to have mountains in the background. I started off sculpting very quickly just to get a basic shape, used the scrape peak tool to make it look chunky and then decimated it to give it that low poly feel. And then I just duplicated it, changed the size slightly to make it look different from the first and positioned them in the background. In terms of texturing, I wanted to keep everything very simple and the main interest in terms of how it looked would be through the lighting. So you can see me here just putting very simple block colors on things and editing aspects as I go along to add visual interest. So a few bevels on my landscape and moving a few rocks into position. I'll give the trees a very simple color and I don't worry too much at this stage. When I get the lighting in, I might go back and adjust these things, but I keep it nice and simple for now. We suddenly got told we had to put a drawbridge in. I was lucky because I kept a space for an actual bridge. So I just had to redesign it to become a drawbridge. 
You can see that I keep it really simple. And you can also see that there's a barbarian character there. That's for size reference. It's really important to have characters spread around the place so you can see the size of your different objects and make sure they're all working together seamlessly. Now for the skybox, I went to the world tab in the shader editor and brought in the simple sky texture. Hooked that up and played with the settings. I had some general settings that I often use and you can just copy mine if you want to get that sort of evening sun look. You won't notice any effect on the lighting at the moment because we're still in Eevee. So you'll only get the look of the skybox and not the effect. And of course, you'll only notice it in rendered view as well. Here I am now in cycles and you can see the effect of the sun. So I have to reduce the power or the strength of the background and just tinker a bit to get the effect that I'm looking for. Now, as I said before, this is all made possible with NVIDIA Studio and PC Specialist. As I'm sure you're aware, Blender's performance is greatly increased by the RTX cards. So here I am in cycles running with my CPU and you can see it's struggling a bit. It's taking a while to render. But if I jump across to the GPU and turn on the denoise with the optics, when I move around my viewport, you can see it's almost instant the render time. And that fast feedback allows me to work so much quicker and get these really nice results with cycles. The new G4 RTX 40 series delivers up to a 70% performance jump over the previous generation. And the great thing is Blender uses the RTX GPU to accelerate cycles render and ray trace lighting thanks to the RT cores and uses the AI cores with optics to denoise your scene really fast. I wouldn't choose anything else except the RTX cards. PC specialists are an NVIDIA Studio partner and leading system builders, selling a range of customizable PCs that perform amazingly with Blender. They specialize in custom PCs and laptops for creators and gamers. So configure your next NVIDIA RTX system using PC Specialist Online Configurator today. So for the banner, I start off with a plane and use the auto mirror, so I only have to model half and then position it. I use a solidify modifier to make sure it's got a little bit of thickness. Not that that's important for Blender, but it could be for other programs. I then simply go in with the knife tool and cut out the shape I want. Once I've got those shapes cut in, I can then assign them to different materials and therefore create a banner with simple flat shading. It's a nice quick way of doing it. And here's the final run through of me walking through my level, showing it as a playable level. You can definitely play my level. It's not open world game. It's sort of like you get led through this pathway. So obviously you land here and we're going to raid the barbarian castle. Well, the barbarians have taken over the castle and we're recapturing it. So we land with our boat here. We run through this way. The haunted forest, you have to watch out for the ghosts, but they're asleep at the moment because it's daytime. You just have to be other barbarians. Run through here, up there, up here. It's a bit tricky in fly mode, but we're getting there. And to the drawbridge, it was, to, it was going to be a normal bridge and it's turned into a drawbridge somehow because of some annoying client. But there's the barbarian you've got to kill on the bridge. Through we go, loads of barbarians here. This is a bit of a tricky area here. Oh, look at that banner. Oh, look at the beautiful castle, amazing. Through here and oh man, that is some big barbarian there. We're in trouble now in the main keep, you see. <laughs> the boss fight. <laughs> the boss, see, no one else had a boss, did they? Hey, hey, how about that? <laughs> and there it is, the completed castle. Hopefully you enjoyed the process and get a chance to look at the battle as well. Make sure you vote for my castle to win in the comments. Big thank you again to NVIDIA and PC Specialist for making all of this fast and easy. And a big thank you to you for watching. I'll see you next time.